Now we're going to move on to the profile page. So let's take a look at the final version of this page and it's going to consist of three main parts. We're going to work on the first part in this video and that's going to be the header that you see here. So the header is going to consist of the profile user's photo URL as well as their username, their display name, and their bio along with their post count, followers count, and following count as well as an edit profile button. If we're looking at our profile, we'll have an edit profile button, but if we're looking at another user's profile, we'll see a follow or unfollow button. So we're just going to create the basic aspects of this in this video. We're going to get the image as well as the username, display name, and bio. We don't currently have a bio, but we'll see how to update that in a bit. And in a later section, we will see how to get the post count, follower count, and following count. And to get a complete overview of what we're going to be making here, in the future we're going to have this area here that's going to allow us to toggle the different orientations of the posts that we'll see underneath. Either a tile view, where the posts look like tiles such as this, or a list view, where they're going to have a larger version. It's going to be a larger, more expanded version where you can see more information about each post that a given user has created. And then of course at the bottom we're going to see the all of the posts that a given user has created. So let's begin by heading to the profile page. And as I mentioned, we're going to need to get the profile user's information and we're going to do that by passing through to this class the user's ID and then fetching their user data based on it. So let's head back to home. We'll go to our page view within build auth screen and we want to pass down a profile ID value which for ourself if we go to the profile page is just going to be our ID from current user dot ID. And here we want to use this null aware operator to first check to see that current user is not null. And only in that case do we want to get the ID property off of it. That's going to help reduce a lot of errors for us. So now we need to create this profile ID named argument. So let's head to profile and we'll add a final string variable profile ID. And then we'll pass the profile constructor this dot profile ID. So now let's create the header and we'll do so within a list view all of our body all of the parts of the profile are going to be within a list view so it's going to have a children list and our header is going to come from come as the return value of a function called build profile header so let's create that and this is going to return a future builder which is going to enable us to resolve the future needed to get the user's information based on their ID. So we're going to import the user's ref from home. So user's ref document and to get the user's document based on their ID, we'll get their profile ID from widget.profile ID and then at the end we'll chain on get to create that future. And then we know our resolve value is going to be made available in our builder function, which is going to give us context and snapshot. And again, if we don't have any data, if not snapshot dot has data, then we want to return our circular progress, which we'll import. And now we want to deserialize our document, which is available on snapshot.data. So we'll make sure to import our user model. So we'll use our from document factory, pass in snapshot.data, and we'll put the results in a user variable of type user. So from this, we'll return a padding widget. And we want to set padding on the top. So we'll set edge insets. Actually, we'll set padding on all sides. So we'll use edge insets.all with the value 
Then for the child, if we take a look at the final version, we see that everything can be put within a single column, and then this column can be broken down into two separate rows. This one right here, and then another one here. We won't put all of these within a single column, but it's basically going to function as a column. So we will have a parent column widget, and that's going to have a list of children, and we'll have our first row, which will have its own children. The first widget will be our circle avatar to display the user's image. So the radius of this will be 40.0, the background color, colors.gray, and the background image. Our image is going to be displayed once again with our cache network image provider widget. So we'll make sure to import that. And the photo URL is going to come from user.photo URL. Underneath our avatar, or to the right hand side of our avatar, we'll have a expanded widget where flex is going to be set to one. Its child is going to be another column. And this is going to contain all of our, all those three numbers posts, followers, and following. So for its children, we'll have a row within it where main axis size is going to be main axis size.max, main axis alignment, main axis alignment dot space evenly to space out these three values along that row. And then for each of the children, since we're going to provide both a number and a text value, we're going to create a special utility function called build count column. And so we're going to have three of these, three executions of this, where we're first going to provide the label and then the count. So for the first one, it'll be posts. And for each of these, it's going to have an initial value of zero. We'll get the posts, followers, and following count later on. So for the next one, the label will be followers and zero and then following and zero. So let's create this function above build profile header. And for its first argument, it'll be a string, which we'll call label and then an integer, which we'll call count. So the return type of build count column will be a column widget. So we'll return column. which will have a main axis size of main axis size dot min. Main axis alignment will be set to main axis alignment dot center. The children will consist of first a text widget. And to provide our count within this text, we need to convert it to a string. Text widgets can only accept strings. So we'll say count dot to string. And for its style, we'll use text, text style Set the font size to 22. The font weight will be font weight dot bold. And after the text widget, we'll have a container. And that will be for our label. So the margin, there will be a margin on top. So we'll use edge insets dot only top with the value of four. And the child will be text. We'll pass the label to it. And for its style, we'll have the color of gray from colors.gray, the font size 15, and the font weight of 400. So we'll use font weight W400. And then heading back down, now that we've got this row here, We'll add another row within this nested column. So after the first row, we'll have another for our profile button, our edit profile button, which we'll create in the next video. So main axis alignment is going to be set to main axis alignment dot space evenly. Then for children, we're going to have a function called build profile button. However, the return value of this function is just going to be a simple text widget for now. That'll just say profile button. 
And now after this row, we're going to add our next set of values right here. And they're all going to be within container widgets. So for the first container, we'll set alignment to alignment center left to align it to the far left. The padding will be edge insets only on the top side. They'll be set to 12. And the child will be text widget where its value will be user.username. And its style will have a font weight, a font weight dot bold, and a font size of 16.0. So this is going to be bold and a bit bigger than the rest of the text. And the next bit of text will be the user's display name, where again we'll set alignment to center left. The padding will also be on the top, but instead this value is going to be 4.0 instead of 12. We'll have another child of a text widget. The text will be set to user.displayName. And we won't set the font size for this, but it'll still be bold. And then for the last container, we'll have the same alignment. The padding on top will be 2.0. And then for the child, we won't set any style rules, style values. And this will be for the text user.bio. So let's save that and take a look at what we have. And for the value that we're passing to profile, the profile ID, in order to pass that down successfully from home, we need to do a full refresh. And let's navigate back to profile. So now we have the basic structure for our header, the current user's avatar, their username, which is a little bit larger than their display name. When we have a bio, that'll be visible. And now we have each of our count columns for posts, followers, and following. And in the next video, we will add our profile button.